I've been looking to really get us, uh, uh, I think, what I would call informed on three areas. So by the time I'm done speaking, I hope that one I can present to you just key points and data about uh, the exchange 2022. So for example, most of our key indices, most of our products, how did they perform? Uh, the second thing that I would like to do also is just to give you what looks like a scorecard of sorts for uh, the exchange in 2022. So just with that backward looking lens, what drove a lot of the activity that we saw, what was some of the key wins that we had. And then finally, most uh, excitingly for me, we'll just take a peek into 2023 and to discuss initiatives that we are looking to execute around with key stakeholders with the board with stakeholders with the regulator and the like uh both let me request this if we can go on mute i think there's a bit of feedback if it's your uh, uh reverbing thank you so much so very quickly let me go uh i think simon did a very good job with a lot of the economic indices and stats so i will skip those on my presentation uh, but nonetheless, they'll be available uh, for those who would need them when we are done. Uh, I want to start with this slide. This is slide 10. Uh, and what I try to present here, uh, can you confirm, please, that you can hear me okay? Yes, Tom. Okay, thank you very much. So this slide just tries to situate NGX, our exchange, with you know global averages. Uh, and this point, I think, had been made before the performance that we had for 2021. Uh, I usually say to people that it's difficult to take credit when the markets are up, because then when they go down, you obviously also have to own that. But I think for the benefit of what we went through all of last year, both as an exchange, as a country, it's quite good to see that when you compare our exchange with exchanges globally, uh, you would find that it was quite a, a good year uh, for those who were invested, almost a 20% like return. Uh, global averages, I think, suffered quite a bit uh, uh, on the back of, you know, global recessionary fears uh, and interest rate hikes. Uh, across the continent, we saw very strong performance uh, out of Egypt in particular. Uh, one of the things that drove this performance in Egypt is because that they had gone, I think, quite aggressively with the reforms that they uh, needed to do. Uh, on our side, on the right side there, I try to put uh, a couple, I think, of some of the drivers of, uh, of this uh, performance that we saw here. Uh, Simon spoke earlier about dividend yields. Last year, our market offered some of the best equity-like dividend yields that you could find. Uh, so by the time you, uh, you factor that into some of this capital appreciation, I think we can see why uh, this performance occurred. The other bit, of course, is what I call repatriation trades. We saw the benefits of our exchange having uh, what I would call dual listed stocks, uh, particularly with the London exchange. So we saw quite a lot of trading activity as people look to either take advantage of arbitrage opportunities or to use that as a mechanism for repatriating capital. Uh, still speaking about data, here is what, you know, generally uh, the turnover that we had in 2022 was. On the left side there, you will see that we had very strong, decent growth year on year in the market turnover uh, for the year 2022 versus 2021. Uh, and the driver of that, if you look on this right side, you see this light green bar chart and you see the decline there. This is the percentage holdings of foreigners in the Nigerian capital markets. And what we see is that thick green line where you see this growth by local investors. Uh, I think it's a good time for me to thank every single one of you know, our intermediaries, of our investors, of our stakeholders that really did show that the local market has depth that the local market, when the right opportunities present themselves, they would actually put capital to work. So this really helps to ensure uh, that our markets were stable, even with a lot of the repatriation and outflow of capital that we saw. So for 2022, this is what the growth in the equity market was. Uh, and on the fixed income side as well, we saw what I call a bit of a modest growth in the uh, turnover and also the market capitalization of the uh, securities that were listed. Uh, the other asset class that we trade is ETFs. What you find here is that from 2021 to 2022, it was also a, a, a decent growth. Uh, you see this decline here from 2022, where we had about 24 billion naira worth. Uh, the big driver of this is the new gold ETF. 
where again, back to some of the FX repatriation challenges, many of the transactions and business uh, in that asset class also was, uh, was missing. Uh, let me speak then very quickly. Uh, as I said earlier, the second key thrust of my presentation is to give you a bit of a scorecard as to activities from last year. Uh, one of the things that I am most excited about is just the types of listings that we had in 2022. Uh, I give a very quick snapshot here of some of those. Uh, Boa Foods uh, were listed at 720 billion. It also drove some of this market performance that we had. Uh, that stock today has grown to over a trillion naira worth of market cap. Uh, late in the year as well, we had a listing of Gary Group Power. Uh, I think we spoke about this also at length at the time, the first generation company to be listed on the exchange. Uh, that also gave us a lot of excitement. And I think one data uh, from all of this is that in 2022, you know, these listings added about five to seven percent worth of new market cap to our business. Uh, but I think more importantly, as I will show later on in the presentation, when I look at the driver of that one and change trillion naira worth of trading, all of the new listings that we had, if we also include MTN, which is from December 2021, accounted for about 15% of the trading activity. And this point is very important because it shows that you do need this origination of listings. If they're quality companies, investors will follow suit. Uh, on the right side there, you see also some of the strategic fixed income offerings that we had in 2022. Uh, I am particularly excited about the Lagos Free Zone listing, uh, not just because this was one of the longest dated corporate bonds that we've had in the history of the Nigerian capital markets, uh, but I think also because you know we're doing a lot of work with the Free Zone area. Uh, you will see that there's a lot of people from the national level attention in that area. I think per square meter, no other area in Nigeria has attracted you know, more investments. And so we're trying to ask how we can obviously work with our regulators, with stakeholders to facilitate more capital flows into this segment and into this area. You know, some of our laws around karma laws, you know, some of them need a little bit of uh, work to facilitate that. So we're quite excited to see that of all the fixed income listings that we had, uh, we were able to bring this free zone listing to the exchange. Uh, the final point on the scorecard for 2022, what I tried to present here are a few other uh, perhaps key important points. Uh, we launched the derivatives in about April last year. Uh, I think that this product uh, does show that I, I think a lot of the successes that we have had really has been on the back of work and efforts and sacrifices that people have laid for several years. So I do want to thank, uh, I think in particular, uh, Oscar, the group CEO, for a lot of that foundation. So we're able to finally launch derivatives uh, last year. Uh, we've spoken about this quite a bit. We do think that this is one of those sort of medium to long term strategic initiatives that should help deepen the Nigerian capital markets, both from a risk management standpoint and also from a returns perspective. Uh, the Technology Board, uh, this is an initiative that we've worked quite, uh, I think, aggressively on. Uh, we're extremely grateful to the SEC that in 2022, they approved the rules for the Technology Board, and we're hoping to then you know, execute on that this year. Uh, very quickly, what are we trying to do with the technology board? Uh, it is an understanding that our rules, as they're currently set up, uh, are not necessarily favorable to technology companies. You know, tech companies tend to have a different uh, 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 sort of uh, approach to, to them. And so this tech board is essentially a separated board where we do try to take a look at our rules and try to make them fit for purpose to make us more attractive to technology companies. So we got that done in 2022. Uh, in 2022 as well, uh, we launched the AELP, uh, that's the African Exchanges Linkage Program. Again, another multi-year effort that uh, successfully across the continent were able to uh, bring that to bear. The final thing I'll touch on here is what I call strategic partnerships. We announced uh, a few key strategic partnerships in 2022 uh, with the Bank of Industry, uh, with the Dubai financial markets. When I think of the partnership potential with Dubai, for example, uh, it's everything from our traditional dual listing uh, potential opportunities. But more importantly, uh, we're trying to ask ourselves, can we add more value to our existing listed corporates 
whereby there might be a world where there's a sort of accelerator track to listings on a few other markets subject to a few metrics being met. Uh, the third and final part, okay, so this part also just speaks about some of the capacity building things that we uh, did during the course of 2022. A lot of initiatives around securities lending, around market making, uh, several webinars uh, on Islamic finance, on margin uh, and the like. Let me speak finally about 2023 outlook uh, I want to stay away from the politics. Uh, I think one, because of course, uh, Simon has spoken about it and also because we're not necessarily political analysts uh, at the exchange, but uh, this is what the political landscape looks like of the key uh, contenders. Uh, on the right, we put what I see, uh, what we see as the top five issues that the new administration needs to look into and to resolve. Uh, I will not spend too much time on this because quite a lot has been said on this both here and by a few other uh, sources. Uh, on our side as NGX, let me go very quickly because of time to uh, what I call the core uh, initiatives for us in 2023. So what will keep us busy? Uh, it's a few things. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the exchange will be looking to position itself as a platform of support for the new administration. When we look at our nation, some of the key challenges that are facing the nation are, are things that you can solve working with the exchange. So we talk, for example, about tax receipts. We say that tax receipts in Nigeria to GDP is about 6%, one of the lowest in the world. Well, if you situate things properly with the capital markets, the capital markets can actually help you enforce that uh, because of some of the uh, regulatory and sort of uh, statutory nets that we have, uh, you know, through the markets. Uh, you talk about, for example, the new administration will be faced with challenges around liquidity, uh, around sources of revenue, around sources of capital, perhaps from assets that are stale or that could be monetized. So I think at the heart of what we'd be looking to do uh, you know, in 2023 is this left bottom uh, bucket here uh, where we'll be presenting the exchange as a mechanism for uh, getting this done. Uh, second of all, uh, we would be looking back at listings. I spoke earlier uh, at the fact that because of some of the listings we had in 2022, we saw knock on effects on our trading. Uh, the new listings we've had in the last 18 months have been responsible for 15% of the trading in 2022. So how do we get more listings to the exchange? Uh, of course, this is an age old question and we will continue to do our bit to try to, uh, to address this. Uh, a few things that we'll be doing, things around advocacy, uh, I spoke about the free zone earlier. Uh, what we find is there are many companies in that zone that could do with listings, uh, but we need to sort of create the right environment for that to happen. We spoke about the technology board earlier as well. Now that we have the approval from the SEC, we would be looking to work with uh, you know, many of the companies uh, and startups in that sector to drive listings there. Very soon you will hear announcements from us of a technology advisory committee we're looking to really situate a, a, a think tank of sorts of many of the VCs, many of the founders, many of the well-known people within the technology ecosystem to really, really take a push uh, at trying to use the capital market as a basis to drive uh, listings. And then, of course, there are lots of companies in the pipeline. Uh, I think for confidential reasons, I can't really disclose, but we do hope that we can bring one, two, three of these very big ticket listings also to the exchange similar to what we have seen um, in the past. Uh, the other thing that we're going to try to do in 2023 is around trading. How do we deepen uh, the trading activity uh, on the exchange? Let me go very quickly back to slide 11. And on this slide, uh, I said earlier, this slide actually is one of the things that excites me the most. So if you can get this declining light green line to change trajectory, for example, in 2023, in other words, can we as the exchange also work in with stakeholders, get more foreigners back into the market in the event that the environment is a lot more conducive. We're gonna spend quite a bit of energy on that because then this trajectory should pick up materially. Uh, the second bit there is around retail. A lot of this growth in this thick green line that's by local investors has tended to be more institutional. So we're also again going to try to approach uh, ability for easier retail trading in our markets. What are some of the ways that we will do this? Uh, we've spoken quite a length with uh, about margin lending 
We're working with the CIS, with fashion, with several stakeholders to continue to try to find a mechanism for margin trading to be possible in Nigeria. When you can do that, you would get more retail investors into the uh, into the market. The other thing that we're trying to do there is really back to technology. Uh, today, it's extremely easy for you to do banking transactions, extremely easy for you to open new bank accounts. How do we get the capital markets closer to that for the retail investors? Uh, there's a statistic that you know I quote quite often. In 2021, the amount of money back and forth, the velocity, if you want to call it that, between people moving money amongst themselves was 330 trillion naira in Nigeria, 330 trillion. But the capital market was only able to attract one trillion of that, at least on the equity side. So how do you change that? There's got to be a technology like um, you know, solution to that. And of course, a lot of investor education needs to happen. One of the things I'm excited about in 2023 uh, is the work we're trying to do with one or two telcos. Uh, can we improve our data dissemination to retail investors, for example? Can we, just like the banks, use USSDs as a way to either spread data or potentially one day uh, a means for investors to open trading accounts? Let me jump very quickly back to uh, that slide. Uh, and just look to round up very quickly. The third thing that we've been looking to do this year and to deepen is new products. We really are trying to uh, bring to the market this bottom right portion here, uh, particularly things like non-depository receipts. One of the things we've had clients and investors talk about is how we can position the exchange as a place to hedge currency exposure. Uh, several markets across the world have mechanisms for this, and we've been looking to uh, get that done on our side. Uh, let me speak very quickly about partnerships. Uh, this year, we're also going to be looking to then deepen some of these partnerships. One that I'm excited about is the partnership with PAPS and with Afrixin. Uh, NGX is taking a very strong lead across the continent to really ask how we can facilitate intra-Africa capital markets trading through PAPS. Uh, the technology exists now. AELP also has solved that you know, integration, but the big headache is really the convertibility of these currencies. You know, If you buy shares using local currency in Nigeria versus another country, how do you settle that? We're looking to really solve a big part of that problem with Africa and with PAPS this year, uh, and I expect that we'll hear announcements and see some action in that regard very soon. Uh, finally, let me speak about sustainability. Uh, this year, uh, we do think that not only is sustainability the right direction to go, uh, it's actually increasingly a profitable direction to go into. Uh, several exchanges globally are talking about carbon credits trading, for example, as a means to make revenues. Uh, we don't think we're quite there yet, uh, but this year we'd we'll be exploring perhaps some sort of a certification program around sustainability uh, backed by the NGX. Uh, we think that if we can get this sort of program, it also will support many of our listed corporates, many of our entities who also then will be looking to, uh, to tap global capital. So let me pause here. There's so much that we can talk about as to what is ahead of us in 2023. Uh, but in the event that I don't get the floor again, I really want to thank very much uh, every single person that you know is involved with this capital markets. It's been sort of trying times for every single one of us, but we do think that uh, as the nation continues to evolve, we're also quite excited as to the possibilities and the uh, I think uh, uh, options available to the capital markets this year. Mm -hmm.